What's going on, fam? It's the first video I'm uploading to YouTube. <clears throat> Universal Knowledge. You know my other two videos were just the Brother Polite videos, the lectures from him. Um, please watch them too. Very powerful lectures. He dropped me some knowledge on there, so make sure you watch them too. Uh, but this is a whole nother, this is on a whole nother note. This is going to be about getting rid of the white man's religion. This religion is holding us back in this country, and it's going by far too long. Um, I was just talking to somebody, and they told me, um, you don't got to do nothing. All I got to do is pray, and God's going to give you that answer. God is going to solve that problem. All you got to do is pray. Mm -hmm. See, and that's part of the problem is we're sitting back waiting for something to happen, but we're not doing it ourselves. And that's exactly what the white man set it up for us that way. That we won't be doing that ourselves. That we're going to be dependent on them to change things. That we're going to be waiting for a man in the sky to come down and save our people. That shit ain't going to happen. I don't know when we're going to get realized this, but it's not. You know what I mean? It's not going to fucking happen. Jesus ain't coming back. All right? That's not happening. So get that in your mind now. That first of all, there was no man ever named Jesus. If anybody can show me proof that there was a man named Jesus, um, other than using the Bible, show me proof of that ever happened. But that it wasn't happening. His name was not Jesus. I mean, I, I challenge anybody to show me proof other than the Bible to show to prove that Jesus actually existed. I'll wait on that because I'm gonna wait forever on that one. So let's get down to it. Um, first, we were not Christians in Africa. We did not worship no white Jesus in Africa. Um, we didn't get and get this Bible. Until white men came over there and conquered it. And they didn't conquer with no military. They came over there with the Bible and took apart Africa. Divided our countries up, made them fight each other, and took us over. Um, so we fall right into their plans by waiting for this white man to come out the skies and free us, man. That shit ain't happening. I don't know. We need to stop that shit. Especially with these holidays coming up. Everybody know that Christmas ain't no real Jesus' birthday. And if it is, why the fuck is Santa Claus have anything, presents have anything to do with Jesus? Y'all all worship the pagan holidays. We need to break away from this shit, man. Break away from the Matrix. All right? It's time to get away from that shit. Um, there's a saying that the white man came into Africa with, the, uh, with nothing but the Bible. Black man had all the resources. White man told the black man, get down your knees, pray. And by the time the black man got up, White man had the resources, black man had the Bible. That's exactly what happened. Um, see, y'all don't understand the systematic way that they put the Bible to hold us down. They believe the Bible told them they could have slaves. They used the Bible to oppress us for so long, for 400, 500 years, they've been using it to oppress us. Um, see, what you need to realize is the Bible was rewritten by King James in 1611, and slave trade started shortly after that, I want to say 1640. Mm -hmm. Um, and they manipulated the system that way. Um, they used what we taught them when the Egyptians taught the Romans and the Greeks. They used that and flipped it on us. On us. Bible actually stands for, by means two, bull means book. It stands for two books. A lot of people think that it's the Old Testament and the New Testament. But no, that's, a, that's false. That's false. What it really is, is the old, the book of the dead and the book of the living. Combine the Egyptians. The, when the Romans first came to Egypt, they didn't know anything about religion, and so what the Egyptians did was try to teach them how, try to teach the Greeks how they how their worship is. The Greeks took it literally as everything they said, and now when they rewrote it, they rewrote it to to manipulate us. I mean, you, do y'all understand what I'm saying? I'm telling you to look up the history on it. You, you'll see exactly what I'm saying is uh, it's true. But yeah, so that's how they did it. They used that and flipped it around on us. All everything in the Bible has already been written before in, on the walls of Egypt. The hieroglyphs, hiero actually stands for spirit, and glyphs means writing. So it's just spirit writing. We wrote on the walls. That's everything. All our spirit writings is just on the wall. The Bible is just a spiritual book. And our spiritual writings are on the walls instead of being in the book that's on the walls. Um, I say everything that's in the Bible has been said already in the on the walls of Kemet. I mean, so you there's nothing new to us. When they say Moses got the Ten Commandments from God when he went up on the mountains, but first and next y'all, do y'all know why King James, why Moses first left Egypt? 
He locked because he killed an Egyptian chef fat, bro. Don't believe me. Look at. Hold on. Look at Exodus 2.12. He killed when Moses killed an Egyptian pharaoh. You know what I mean? And he fled Egypt. That's why he first fled Egypt. And then they say that uh, Moses was an Egyptian priest for 40 years. Then they want to say that uh, he got the Ten Commandments on top of the mountains. But the Egyptians already had the Ten Commandments and the 42 Laws of Kemet. You know I mean? So that don't make no sense. If God really gave it to him, well, how did the Egyptians get it? Because Egyptians had the laws before him. And he was trained, and then the Bible says that Moses was trained in all of the knowledge of Egypt. Not some of the knowledge, all of the knowledge of Egypt. Every day before, in school, they had to recite the 42 laws of Kemet. So if they're reciting the, the 42 laws of Kemet, then and the 42 laws of, and the 42 laws of Kemet is the Ten Commandments. Who did he really get it from? I only got it from God. He had to get it from Egypt. I mean, that's just common sense right there. He had to get the knowledge from Egypt first. Um... Then we want to go into how there's forty, there's twenty six missing chapters of the book of the Bible. Don't believe me? Look up uh, Doctor. Um, yeah, so look up Doctor Phil Valentine. He'll break down all the different uh, books that are missing. Um, I come with sources. I don't just come with bullshit, and that's where I'm getting my sources from, Doctor Phil Valentine. Um, so look him up. He'll dive into that more. I'm going to specifically talk about the missing book called the Book of Enoch. But before I get into that, I'm going to talk about the universal book that we all have, is, which is in our DNA. Our DNA, DNA determines, our DNA is more than just teach us how we act and how we look. It's also information to get passed on from generation to generation. It's not just bullshit, it's, a, it's a real shit. But let me talk about this Book of Enoch. So in the Book of Enoch, they talk about the fall of angels and how... Giant creatures or angels came from the sky and started having sex with all the females here on earth. And um, they also taught, uh, gave us uh, advanced advanced weaponry, took, taught us how to civil, how to be civilized, you know, with buildings and a lot of things like that are our creations. And it's weird because um, the Anunnaki had a very similar uh, story. If you look up, um, what's his name, Zachary Stitchens, broke down, uh, deciphered the Sumerian text and broke down uh, their story of the pe of people called the Anunnaki came from a planet called Nibiru. Nibiru is, the ninth, is supposedly the ninth planet uh, in our solar system that Pluto was supposedly revolving around this planet. You know how they just said Pluto's not a planet anymore? It's because it, broke, it, don't, it revolves around a planet called Nibiru. They don't teach you about it. They ain't going to show you that though. But um, So in the Sumerian text, they believe that these creatures called Anunnaki came down and had sex with all the females and taught civilization, and taught man civilization. Uh, you know how how to build this stuff, and it's just like it, just like I just said in the Bible, in the, in the Book of Enoch. And when they came down, they landed and called this place Eden. The place they landed and taught civilization, they call it Eden. Same with um, the Bible of the Garden of Eden. It's really about them. It's really about that. And they called the people there Adamites or Adam. Same way it is in the Bible. The people called Adam. Adam was not the first man on earth in the Bible. If you look up Genesis. So if you go to Genesis uh, chapter 1 verse 26. It says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let him have dominion over fish in the sea. Who is this us and our? Which they ain't speaking of. I mean... It was more than one person. It's not one person. God in this Bible is not one person. It's nonsense to say that it is. People say it's the three, the Holy Trinity, but God is one. Why would they say making them our image? That don't make any sense there. Um, then if you go to verse 27, uh, it says, So God created man in, man in his own image, and the image of God created he, him, male and female, he created them. So he made them more than one person. Right, he made male and female at the same time, at the beginning. Then when the Anunnaki came down and get to Adam, um, in the Bible, what it says is in chapter two, verse, uh, let me see, verse two, I want to say, um, 
Oh yeah, here we go. Verse verse seven. And God and Lord God formed man from of dust and ground and breathed in the mouth with the breath of life, and man and man became a living soul. What it's really talking about is how he woke up man, how the Anunnaki woke up man, not that man was first created right then and there. When he breathed the breath of life into him, what it really talked about was just giving him the knowledge of life. Um that's that's all that really talking about. Um so all I'm gonna say is if the Anunnaki had a very similar story before the Bible was created, because the Anunnaki's go back over four hundred thousand years ago. The Bible was only two thousand years ago, two thousand years old. So if that story came first, you gotta go by the original one. You gotta go by the original story first, not by the rewritten one or this plagiarized one, which is the Bible. Go by the original one. Right. I know all you don't believe in the aliens coming down, but by the Bible, I'm going by the Bible, I'll show you exactly how it correlates with what the Anunnaki said. With the, um, what Sumerians said about the Anunnaki's. Oh. Then I'm going to all the contradictions of the Bible. I mean, people say there's no contradiction in the Bible, but I'm going to show you how they, how it contradict itself. And how we got to get away from this bullshit? Because they, the, they stole it from different places, and that's why it contradicts itself. So, in one part of the Bible, they'll tell you um, that you were made in God's image. So you will act just like God, correct? Um, so God is a God have a sense. If you have a sense of humor, it's probably because God has a sense of humor because He was made. And you were made in His image. So if you kill, if God kills and you kill, it's because you are made just like God. God is a very wrathful God too. But you get wrathful, you will go to hell for it, correct? I mean that don't make any sense because you're only trying to be just like God. That's it's the nonsense of what it keeps spreading. Is that if we are just like God? And God kills, and God is very vengeful and vengeful. And I do the same thing, I go to hell for that. Correct? That's what makes no sense there. But I'm just like you. I'm going to be punished for being just like you when you made me just like you. Another contradiction it says, um, one instance they'll tell you um, uh, an eye for an eye. Then later they'll tell you, um, a turn of a one, a turn of a cheek. Which one is it? You can't go by both. You can't throw away the Old Testament and then only stick to the New Testament. I mean, it don't make no sense. God is the same person he was at the beginning and he is at the end. God did not change. If God wanted people to not kill, he's going to say that. If God wanted an eye for an eye, he will always say that. God would have never changed. If God wanted you to turn up a cheek, he would have been told you to turn up a cheek back then. That would make no fucking sense. So we got to get away from this bullshit and the contradictions. Then they say, do not, uh, in the Bible, they tell you not love. Uh, do, and uh, in John chapter 2, verse 15, they tell you do not love this world or anything of this world. Then, and, uh, uh, but then God will tell you he so loved this world that he gave up his own begotten son. So which one is it? Am I not supposed to love the world, but you love this world? That you love this world so much you gave up your own begotten son? But I can't love this world. I mean, that, that's the, it's the idiotic contradictions of the Bible. Um, um, then for everyone who says Jesus only came for peace, uh, I want you to look up. Um, and God loves everyone. Um, I want you to look up Matthew 15, 21. Uh, verse 15, no, chapter 15, verse 21 through 28, when God is talking to the Canaanite, and when I mean, Jesus talked to the Canaanite, and he told the woman, I'm not here for you, uh, basically, I'm not here for you, um, and that y'all get y'all the scraps for the, y'all the dogs, and you gotta please your people first, forget about, y'all get the scraps as the dogs, you don't feed the dog, table scraps, something like that, um, but it's, uh, Matthew 15, verse 21 through 28, um, then we're gonna talk, Right, so this is, see, there's contradictions here. So the reason why I got into this topic in the first place, the reason why I really want to dig into this topic, is because I was talking to a woman and on Facebook, and we was talking about the riots happening down in North Carolina. And what she told me was, we should not riot; we should let God handle them in the afterlife. And that's the idiotic thing is that we don't handle our problems here. Just like when the shootings happened in South Carolina and um, in Charleston, South Carolina. The next day, the old family said we forgive them. I mean, and that's the thing is that we letting them do this. We won't, we, uh, we won't change this whole system on ourselves. But we letting them do whatever the fuck they want. We gotta stop that shit. We gotta get away from this. God's gonna get everybody back in the afterlife. God's gonna come down and save us all. That's not gonna happen. Only person gonna save us is us. 
That's number one. They got to stop doing that. Um, uh, but yeah, that's it for this video right now. This is just a quick video of uh, synopsis about everything that's going on, uh, how I feel about getting rid of the white man's religion. Later, I'm going to dig deeper into more about getting rid of that white man's religion and coming uh, uh, and start believing in Kemet's uh, spirituality and African spirituality. But this is just one overall view. Um, please comment on my video, like, uh, subscribe. If you got any issue, come with facts and we have a good discussion. This is fun making the video. I love my people. Um, hotel to everybody out there. Uh, I love y'all. Good night. Black Power.